Hello and welcome to the SOS Planet Wide Hackathon run by Crypto Chicks. Um, my name's Angela and I run Hackathons International, but today in this opening ceremony, we're going to start with a couple of icebreakers. So on the top of your screen, you can see this link, menti.com, and there's also this code. Um, I can't see here. So if you enter this code up here where my mouse is, um, answer the question, how are you feeling right now? And I can put this aside. So if you go to menti.com, use the code 930562. It's an easy thing for you to do. So menti.com, this is the tool that we're going to use for our icebreaker. Welcome to this opening ceremony of the Planet Wide SOS Hackathon. I'm super excited to help host the opening. So if you just go on your phone, very simple. I'm doing it right now. You just go at menti.com, press go, and then use the code up here. If you can see my mouse, so put in there 9304. Six, two. How are you feeling right now? So put some answers there. You should get a screen just like this if you can see my camera. You've got awesome people feeling excited. Super duper. Awesome. Who's put those? Who's put super duper? Can people unmute themselves? I, I hope did, they can. I did, I did. Yeah, you guys can <laughs> unmute yourself actually. Okay, awesome. Why are you feeling so excited, Elena? Oh, oh my God, I, I don't know. It's, uh, it's an opening ceremony. This is something that we were looking forward to for a long time, preparing for, and now finally we can start, yay. <laughs> Excellent, how long have you been preparing this for? Uh, about three months. Wow, three whole months, that's unbelievable. I think a lot of people underestimate the organizing a hackathon. So it does take a lot of time and effort. So we're bringing this in for all of you to enjoy. And if you have just joined us, please go on this link, menti.com. It should be at the top of your page where my mouse is pointing. And also if you can use the code 930462, we can get started on a couple of questions to see how you are going this bright early morning. It's 1 a.m. my time, or maybe it's the afternoon or evening for you. So my next question here is, where in the world are you? So if you go back to your phone, it should say there, go to slide. So I've changed the slide and I want you to put in there where exactly are you? Which country are you from? Where are you located? Tell us where in the world are you? Obviously for me, I'm going to put Australia. Put that up there. Let's see if there are any, any other Aussies here. Oh, Istanbul, top of the world, India. <laughs> New Orleans, oh, Turkey, Belarus, GTA, amazing. Oh, Berlin, there we go. Oh, a couple of people from Toronto, a lot of people from Canada. Ah, India, that just popped up. Kiev as well, Germany, excellent. Oh, you got Ukraine and Russia. This is a very, very diverse group. Very, very good. Oh, you got Spain couple people from Europe now, Paris, Germany. Hello, hello. Okay, let's go to our next question. So if you have just joined us, go to menti.com. There's this link up at the top. Use the code 930462. So have you been to a hackathon before? Tell me. Have you been to one? Have you been to many? Or have you ever been to any? Um, we want to know, have you been to a hackathon before? It's good for us to help the newbies out there that are joining a hackathon for the first time. And we really want to ensure that everyone has a great experience. It's also 
it's always awesome to have people who have done hackathons before because you're here to learn um, and learn from each other. And one last question, are you excited for the SOS hackathon? If you wanna put your energy rating, no, not really interested to, yes, you're full of excitement, put that five up there. Tell us, are you excited for the SOS hackathon? We wanna see everyone pumping, we want to see everyone dancing. So I'm now gonna pass it on back to the organizers, Elena, back to you. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and let's get started and kicking off with the hackathon. Thank you, thank you so much, Angela. So that was Angela from Hackathons International. She's a CEO and she's uh, speaking, she's with us from Australia. It's 1 a.m. right now there and we really appreciate Angela joining us at that late hour. So guys, who is also at, the, at this late hour? Please raise your hand or unmute your microphone. We would like to thank you for that. Uh, and thank you for those who actually joined us where it's early, like 8 a.m or 7 a.m. Thank you so much as well. Um, we are kicking off with our hackathon. It's an opening ceremony. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start my presentation and share the screen. And we also run in live at cryptochicks.ca slash soshackathon.com. So if you would like to refer any friends uh, or somebody else there, please do so. All right, so I am figuring out how to share my screen properly, obviously. Uh, it's not as easy as I thought. <laughs> okay. All right, so guys, can you see my screen? And we actually, we are muted all your microphones. If you uh, feel like you need to ask the question, please uh, speak up or you can use the chat as well. All right, so I have some uh, people that are already in the chat. Great, thank you so much. You can see the screen, awesome. So we're kicking off with our opening ceremony uh, with our hackathon, Share Our Strengths Planet Wide. Thank you so much for all our sponsors and the partners who participate in this event, who help us to organize, to get the word out, to get uh, uh, this, all these people, wonderful people that I joined this hackathon. And so for us, uh, we just had an update today. We have 47 countries that join uh, Portugal and uh, uh, Myanmar joined uh, today. Thank you so much guys for joining. I even heard, didn't hear, heard about this, uh, have never heard, never heard about Myanmar country before, but obviously it's Birma. That's uh, the former Birma. Thank you so much for joining. All right, so our hackathon is, of course, this is all your, all your opportunity to fund ideas and solutions. We were working really hard to uh, collect the money to raise the money for the prizes. Uh, we're still working on it. And as of today, as we announced the prize money, uh, we hope that we're going to raise it even more by the submissions time and by the awards time. So please uh, believe in us. How does it work at our hackathon? You already, pro if you're here, you probably know, but because people will be watching this recording, please still go ahead and register. We still have until June 1st to do it. Register at soshackathon.com. Join our Discord, link is also on this website. In Discord, you, have, you can create your project team or join one of the existing teams. Please check the channels for the teams and check what they are doing and join one of the teams. We are submitting our projects for judging by June 16, and our judges will be announced a bit later. And the entire community, all people who participated in all the workshops, uh, in uh, uh, all the activities before the hackathon will be able to vote as well to select the winners. Uh, you can er, still earn USOS points, voting points by attending workshops and presentation. And by the way, if you're here today, 
please enter your Discord ID in the chat so we could identify that you were present here and give you an extra judging SOS points. Uh, also, we have the entire team now started working and we will be doing the whole campaign of the donations uh, to for the people who would like to vote and upvote the project and we are hoping to raise more money this way so the nation of the money also going to be considered as the voting power as the voting points so please stay tuned for this announcement our review of submissions will be uh, and the judging voting will be in a period of june 16 to june 30th and you, our winners will present hackathon their hackathon project after June 30th. Also, we will define the date. And also, all winners, and if uh, you feel like you can benefit from the program, you can join our future mentorship and incubation program to develop your project into a startup. We already develop a pool of mentors and we develop we developed the program. We're enhancing it this year. So we will invite you into this program. These are the dates, the two days that you need to remember right now. Submissions dated June 16, and results is going to be on June 30th. For more dates and more, uh, the, the more workshops, speeches, please uh, connect to this bit.ly slash SOS hack calendar. You will see all the events there that you can attend and get a voting power for and also get information from. Our trucks. So we have two trucks. And we please pick one to do your submissions, pick only one. It's everything remote. Uh, we have a, a prize fund of $2,000. We accept all ideas and solutions to help people and businesses to function, to connect remotely. And the second track, anything local with a prize fund of $2,000. We accept ideas and solutions to help and support your local businesses, communities, and people. Everything that ideas that help your local businesses, communities, and people accepted in this track. On the top of the tracks, you can pick one or more awards to submit your uh, project into. It's going to be Top Business Idea Award. It's oriented on to those who not necessarily have technical skills, who, for example, would, was not able to find any developers to develop their idea, but have still have a brilliant idea. This is a very good award to submit for you. In this uh, submission, please focus on the business, on your sustainability, on your idea, on how you go to market. We will have additional information on how to improve your submission for top business idea as well. Top women-led teams. We here at Crypto Chicks, of course, would like to attract as many women as we can. And all women-led teams are welcome to apply into this award as well with the price fund same $2,000. And we also have one of our sponsors introduce the Top Ivy implementation. We had a workshop yesterday. We will publish the recording on uh, cryptochicks.ca slash SOS hackathon. SOS Hack Life, uh, you will be able to see what it's about. We're going to bring them back uh, around June 4th, and we're going to repeat this workshop. So please, if, you, if you're developing on Avi, please submit your project for this award as well. Placements. We will have two winners in each track and each award. Therefore, we are giving the money away to 10 teams. So we will have for each track, we will have champion and we will have a runner up. Uh, both of you will receive the titles, will be published, will be promoted. The rules are only one prize per team. We would like to award and give money away to as many teams as we can. So that's why we were introducing this rule, only one prize per team. You can submit for one, more than a, one award to uh, increase your chances to win, but you still will be uh, uh, awarding, awarded only one prize. In case of a tie, if let's say two teams placed at the same level, 
the money will be split between those teams. It means that we might even have more than 10 winners, which is exciting. We would like to give away money to as many people as we can. Submission will contain, and these submissions will be accepted at soshackathon.devpost.com by June 16, by the end of June 16 uh, at the UTC time. All right, so universal time by 11.59 p.m. you have to submit your projects. And in these submissions, there will be forms where you specify your team name, project name, all participants names and discord IDs. We would like to locate all the people that, are, that, that were there on the team to make sure that everything, all there was distributed fairly. We also will require for you to Record the video, a short video, please, for up to ten, uh, up to two minutes. If you if you uh, if you do record longer, we still accept it, but we cannot guarantee that people are going to watch it. So up to two minutes video, please submit, uh, please record and submit the link. Uh, also, you submit your presentation link and your code if it's applicable, right? If you have a presentation, if you have a code please submit those links too. And all the link security, please double check that they all set to be seen by anyone. Otherwise, if people receive a security uh, messages that they cannot access your video, cannot access presentation link, cannot access your code, probably your submission will be missed and not judged. So please make sure that you do that. If you have any questions, you can contact us. We will consult you how to do that. And for our opening ceremony that is going this whole weekend, we don't have that many speeches, but we have a great ones. We have Vitalik Buterin speaking tomorrow about building digital communities on Ethereum. Uh, we have Ben Gordzel, uh, who is the inventor of Robert Sophia AI. So he's going to be speaking about AI and health, longevity, and democracy on AI. Uh, Paul Brody uh, out of Ernst and, or Ernst and Young. So he will be speaking about privacy for business applications. Stani Kulishov, who is our very great sponsor and friend. So he will be sp speaking about building the future of finance. Uh, and this is the person who introduced this uh, $2,000 award. Uh, so please uh, attend this presentation to ask him a question. We also have a kind of surprise and secret panel. Our team is working right now selecting the candidates. We would like to make it very exciting. Since we are doing voting and judging via the decentralized organization on the blockchain, that's all is going to be discussed at this panel. And this panel is going to be uh, headed by Vitalik Buterin, who is uh, Ethereum from the Ethereum inventor. Uh, we will reveal other candidates, I think, later today or early tomorrow. For full list of the events, uh, all the presentations, please go to bit.ly slash SOS hack calendar, not, so you cannot miss any of the presentations. And if you have any questions, please contact us at stayintouch at soshackathon.com. You can also go to the website and fill the contact form there. Uh, or you can also join us on Discord and ask questions of the, from the any admins that are there or any community leaders. At this, I'm going to stop my presentation and hand it back to Angela, who is a CEO. Angela Chan is the CEO of Hackathons International. She's going to talk to you about how to build a very, very effective team uh, for your hackathon. Thank you, Angela. It's all yours. Thank you. All righty. So, um, yeah. So in today's session, we're going to go to and talk about the secret recipe to managing a winning team. I feel like, um, especially seeing a lot of hackathons in the past two months with COVID-19, a lot of them have gone online. So just seeing how you can better manage each other, talk to one another and get to know everyone from a social standpoint and emotional standpoint is super important. So, um, this is part of the Hacker Toolkit, which is all around, as we said, to empower everyone to get the most out of our online global experiences. So the toolkit's just a couple of guides and templates. Um, you can look it up a bit later. So if you do want to follow 
with this presentation, um, you can go on the bit.ly forward slash the hacker mindset. So it's capital T, capital H, capital M. Um, here you can download the template. So it's a one page template that we're going to go through in this session. Alternatively, you can go and point your camera at the QR code and um, put in your details and you can just download this template right here. So I'll just put this up for another 10 seconds and hopefully you'll have the ability to go on this bit.ly link. So just follow the link bit.ly forward slash the hacker mindset. So here, in this presentation, we're going to go through this one page template and feel free to go in, download it and then um, use it as well as part of your teams. So in this session, I'll be going through three key things. The number one thing is what should I look for when recruiting team members? Secondly, how do we define innovation and what should we try and achieve? And the third one is how to mobilize a winning team. So I just wanted to um, open this session up with a quote in true um, hackathon fashion where true innovation doesn't just create technologies it's also about creating movements and it's about creating change so I love this hackathon here with um, the crypto chicks and really opening up and engaging the blockchain community because we're not only here to create blockchain solutions but we're here to empower people um, to create something that's meaningful that people will actually use and for us as society and as citizens of this world and of this planet to ensure that um, we are making a sustainable and livable world so hopefully I want you to recognize that during these hackathons yes it's about creating tangible products, so minimum viable products to display to the judging panel. At the same time, you need to be conscious of how we can build our tribes, build our communities to do something for a greater cause. So the first thing I'm going through is what do I look for when we look to recruit for a team? So there are th the four C's that I normally speak about. So the first one's connection, then it's collaboration, creation, and commitment. So when it comes to um, gathering and recruiting a team, I'm sure there are mechanisms for the SOS hackathon, but I always look into the first thing, which is about connection. Can I relate to this person? Do we have something in common? Um, you know, can we, like, do you have a good gut feeling about this person being recruited in your team? Um, when it comes to connection, this is also about, um, for example, stalking to people or looking people up on LinkedIn, on Facebook, just to see if there is any commonality, any synergies there. That way you've really got a strong purpose and a strong way that you can you know, bounce off each other and get to know each other in a personal way. It doesn't have to be just on LinkedIn about, you know, oh, well, we've worked in the same company or we've worked, you know, we live in the same country. It's not just that, but it's also about getting to know people People and their passion. So understand what they've done from a volunteer standpoint. Where have they managed teams? Um, you know, what else have they been doing? Do they also have kids or have, you know, very close to their family? So having that connection is super important. The second thing is collaboration. So um, in terms of collaboration, we look into the strengths and skill sets of people. So for example, um, in a hackathon environment, we have the hustler, the hipster, and the hacker. So the hustler is the person who sells a product. The hipster is the person who designs the product, so designs the customer experience. And the third one is the hacker. And this is the person who creates and builds that um, that prototype. So having um, and being collaborative, understanding everyone's different skill sets and recognizing them um, is super important in order for that team to um, work really well together. The third one is creation. So what are you actually going to create? It's always good to start off with um, even putting out, you know, what kind of area you want to focus on, which kind of topic, what is the problem that you want to solve, or even the idea that you are sparking. Having this purpose and this united vision is, is super, is really good so that you know exactly what kind of what you want to create. Having that vision and then being able to pivot, we're going to talk about that a bit later. The fourth thing is commitment. So you know how when we sign up to events or sign up to webinars, um, we sign up, but we don't really follow through. So in terms of hackathons, we really ask everyone to commit 
not only to themselves, but also to their teams and also to the organisers and the people that we're trying to change and build a positive impact on. You know, I don't like to do things half ass. I always like to do things with at least 110% commitment. So how are you going to do this? Um, in the planet-wide SOS Hackathon. And I challenge all of you listening to this uh, session to be committed to this hackathon. So what is innovation? Innovation is change that adds value. I know a lot of people kind of say, you know, innovation's a buzzword. Um, it's something that a lot of people like to talk about. But in terms of how we define innovation, it's something that um, is, is of value to people. So for example, I was in Bangkok, um, so Bangkok last year in Southeast Asia, and you know we went to, into a taxi, and they had you know disco lights, and there was a, like a DJ kind of set, and there was TV screens at the back, and it was fun and exciting, and it was such a novelty. But the need for us really was to get from our um, hotel to the event that we needed to go to. So getting from um, one place to another. And so where Uber innovates in this space is that they change the whole service system of a taxi where you are able to have exceptional service. So I've been in Ubers where you get like, um, you know, you get your phone charger already there. Um, there's Mentos's and there's water everywhere, everywhere available for you. So having that intersection between that novelty and need and getting you from one place to another is what innovation looks like and challenge all of you to do the same to see what is out there and what is the actual need and how are you going to bring the two together so when it comes to the hacker mindset there are three phases so one it's spotting the opportunity what the point of here second is understanding what are you going to build and then seeing whether you want to go ahead with the product or not and don't be afraid to keep going so it's all about developing a strong team purpose so that you can all work cohesively together and learn. So if learning is um, failing to learn, but also having fun learning and having this mindset is um, really key to knowing what you want to get out of a hackathon. And the fourth thing is creating a valuable, tangible product. So let's start with the first phase. So SPOT, what does this stand for? It stands for understanding your own story, knowing your people in your team, um, and then looking into the opportunity statement and then testing to see uh, whether or how you uh, um, test your and validate your assumptions. So the first one is story. So when it comes to doing a hackathon, I always find that understanding everyone's backstory to understanding how they got to where they are now really breaks the ice. And it must be emotive, compelling, and most of all, personal. So for example, um, in my experience, so in my experience talking to my grandma, I found out that she got really stressed going to the shops every day because she was worried that she wouldn't get toilet paper at home. So now I, so this is the reaction. So now I really want to build something to help the elderly feel comfortable at home, especially during COVID-19 or any other future pandemics. So as you can see, it's really personal in such, such in a way that, you know, in my experience, so what is your current scenario and situation? What is something that has touched you so that you have a compelling need to feel passionate about doing something about it? The second thing is I found out that. So what are those aha moments and that light bulb moment to get you to go, oh, actually, I should do something about it. And this is the solution that maybe I should be, you know, working on. And what is your reaction and purpose? So now I, what are you going to do out of it? So it's really good that everyone in your team that you talk about this and you also understand everyone's backgrounds and stories. And this, as I said, breaks the ice between everyone. And so everyone gets to know each other at a deeper level. The second thing in P is people. So who do you have in your team? What are their skill sets? And how are you going to be inclusive of everyone? Because ultimately, we want to have a diverse skill set in a hackathon environment. 
So the first thing um, we say is, you know, what is your name? So what should people call you? Um, a lot of people call me Ange. So, you know, it's short for Angela. Um, so just say, what is your name? Next thing is purpose of participation. So when it comes to you going to a hackathon, understand why. Why are you doing this hackathon? Are you here to upskill yourself? Are you here to network with other people in the crypto blockchain world? Are you here to win because you really want that funding to start your own startup? Or are you here to build up your experience to say that, hey, you know, I built up a whole portfolio of amazing projects and maybe I want to get a job because I need to build my portfolio after this COVID-19 um, experience. And the last thing is maybe are you going to build your own startup? So these are great ways that you might want to think about when you are participating in a hackathon. I know for me, when I first started going to hackathon, I didn't know anything about the startup or innovation ecosystem. I thought a startup was like a starter in for bread, like some sort of yeast kind of thing. And so I said to myself, okay, I really want to um, network and get to know the community. I want to meet uh, founders of startups and I want to meet mentors who will be really great and help shaping my career. Now when I go to hackathons, since that was almost 10 years ago, I go to hackathons because I want to learn about blockchain because I feel like that's an emerging technology for me to get to know and be ahead of the trend in. So I really want to challenge for you to reflect and to understand your purpose of participation. The next thing is your passion. So what are you passionate about and what do you want to work on? So for example, you might be passionate about helping the, our grandparents. So helping people who are over you know, 60 years old. You might be passionate about because you've, you know, I personally work in the um, renewable space. So I really want to work to build something to do you know, with smart energy. So understanding what everyone's passions are about is really important. The next thing is participation. So this is a hackathon that goes on for two and a half weeks. So it starts in a couple of days. So understand, you know, do you work full time to your family? Like what is your commitment and what are the skills that you have to offer? So you might, if you work full time, you might only be able to work on after work hours or only during weekends. So just be transparent about that because everyone needs to understand where everyone is at and what pace they are running at, especially in a hackathon environment. And then the last thing, which a lot of people forget, is this personal development. So share with each other, what do you want to learn in a hackathon? I know for me, being a people manager, um, when I onboard people on my team, I always say, okay, hey, you know, who are you? What is your background experience? But also, what do you want to develop into? You know, I know you've had technical experience, but now you want to get some business development and commercial skills. So how can we work towards that? Everyone is a constant and lifelong learner. So, um, you know, we talk about this a lot of the time, but why don't we use this opportunity to fast track ourselves and be aware of what everyone needs to be working on. So here as a people manager and from a leader perspective, sit down, um, fill this in, make sure that everyone shares. Um, and I do this with my teams as well, you know, understanding what our purpose, our passion, participation and personal development is. So if and in the event that everyone in your team wants to build a startup, uh, start those discussions around intellectual property from the start. Because, you know, if you receive money um, from this hackathon or if you want to do more um, after this hack, um, it's good to do it up front so that you've got some guidelines there. And it's also really and highly recommended that everyone signs the hack code of conduct, which is more around anti-discrimination. The third thing in SPOT is opportunity. So what is your strong vision and how and what are you going to do in terms of your innovation during this hackathon? So understand what is your strong vision. So you, maybe your vision is to empower every single person who's a, every senior citizen, I know, in the world to be self-sustainable, for example. So they want to feel comfortable. Um, they want to feel comfortable and you know have live a, live a great life especially for the end years so understand what your vision is and have and having your mindset that you should be able to pivot so 
you need to be agile. You need to be adaptive. This is not corporate life where it takes, you know, three weeks to do, to make one decision. Here, it takes three seconds. So describe your innovation in 140 characters or less. Good to do this at the start because this should include your who, what, where, when, why, and how. Just like in Twitter, where you have to describe, you know, your tweet or your key message in 140 characters or less, you must include um, who, what, where, when, why, and how. So here in this scenario, say, for example, I want to, um, our innovation is to create a specialised service where um, people who are over 60 years old in Toronto um, get a, get their household goods within, I don't know, four hours, for example. So describing your innovation there is a key thing so that everyone knows the direction that we're going into. The next thing is to test. So whenever we have a opportunity statement and then we kind of have an idea of what we want to achieve and what we want to work on, I tell everyone to just stop everything and to just go on Google for like 15 minutes. We Google the heck out of everything. We Google, you know, what are the assumptions? We write out what are the assumptions that we have based on the opportunity statement and we validate them with data. And then after this, we look into our competitors to see what is already out there and how we're going to fulfill the gap. So for example, here, the assumption is for the opportunity statements that the majority of elderly get coronavirus. And so when we looked into Google and after two minutes, we found that early findings from China which pertained to the first 17 people to die in the outbreak, revealed that the medium age was 75. And a study in the New England Journal of Medicine found that the median age for the first 425 people infected with the virus was 59. So here you can see that we validated our assumption and yes, the majority of people, majority of the elderly get coronavirus. So the second assumption that we outlined was that there was not enough food for Australians. Um, and so the data we looked into and found after five minutes was that according to the National Farmers Federation, imported food only accounts for 15% of daily supply. About two thirds of Australia's produce is exported, meaning we make plenty more than we actually consume. And for farmers, it's pretty much business as usual. So here you can see that um, it's not just, it's not exactly that people cannot find food in their supermarkets. It's more in the supply chain because there's plenty of food, especially from the farms in Australia. So here we probably need to readjust what we are going to work on. So the second phase is build. So what exactly are we going to build during this hackathon? We've got now until the 16th of June. So um, right on there at the top, what are you going to develop over the hackathon period? Would it be just that specialized delivery service or what exactly you're going to um, get people to do? Um, and then put in here your pitch date and time and always have that as your focus, especially when we are going to map out our milestones and seeing how everyone is contributing to the hackathon. The third thing is platform. So what exactly, how are we going to talk to each other? We've got, you know, the Discord, which is great, but as a team, you know, if there are urgent things, do we buzz each other on WhatsApp or do we make sure that if something's urgent, we put it at the top of our Trello board? So what, how exactly are we going to communicate with each other? The next thing is criteria. So what is the judging criteria? It's so important for all the organizers to put that out and for you as participants to say, okay, we need to um, ensure that our goal achieves these criteria. I know for me, when I've organized and judged hackathons with each of these criteria, we give a scoring of, you know, out of five or out of 10. So make sure that you have that in mind so that if you really want to win and get the most out of your hackathon, you are hitting all those points. Okay, and then when it comes to checking in and talking with each other, I have this three dimensional kind of type of meeting where we discuss, we understand the destination and also the direction. So um, later on in this next slide here, we are building 
our timeline, but when we talk with each other and have different check-ins, so say normally in a hackathon weekend environment, we check in once every three hours. So maybe um, in this environment, you might want to check in once every three days, just to see how everyone is going, if everyone needs to adjust, and then see um, how we can help each other. So the first one is discuss. So each person shares what they've achieved during the last time period and the learnings that you've got. So it's really good to um, reflect on your learning. So firstly, discuss and do a round table um, of what everyone has done. The next thing is destination. So based on what you've achieved over the last time period, agree on what you want to accomplish at the end of the hackathon. So okay, it's okay here to pivot um, it's also good to ongoingly discuss this. And the third thing is your direction. So based on your final destination, what do you need to reflect on and what do you need to start, stop and restart? And also ask each other help if you need this. So use this as an open platform. So remember to do the 3D, the three dimensional check-in. So when it comes to actually building something, um, I always try in a hackathon environment, nominate a herder. So the herder is someone who does not make all the decisions. Um, they instead keep everyone on track. They are not necessarily the person who will be you know, bureaucratic and say, you know, you should do X, Y, and Z, but everyone needs to adhere that, you know, we're all here for the same reasons. We all have the same decision-making capabilities and we need to ensure that everyone is on the right track. So think of it like, you know, a shepherd or even someone who is a project manager. Okay, so with the hustler, hipster and hacker, we've got the hustler. So this is the person who sells, um, who is more the seller, the business developer, the person who grows and develops the marketing. Um, the hipster, this is the person who understands the user experience and what that journey is for the customer. And then you have the hacker. And this is the person who looks into the tech the technology and its capabilities and the tools um, and seeing what is out there to create that solution. So maybe in this one, since you know, you've got the, you've got different tracks here. So maybe see how um, you might want to beef up this hacker scenario if you're doing the demo, or maybe everyone needs to encompass a little bit in terms of understanding what blockchain is. So um, you know, it's it's different for each hackathon, but I would say you can use this as a strong frame framework. So firstly, um, you know, rock up, join a team, and co complete the first phase, which is spot. Then um, from the hustler's standpoint and hip, or from everyone's standpoint, um, conceptualize and do a lot of research and understand the capabilities of the technology. Then you need to agree on that final problem statement because that is ultimately what your vision and your mission is. And also have a good understanding of potentially what your minimum awesome product is. After this, the hustler does um, a lot of customer feedback, does the script and video and creates a presentation and tries to get the customers on board. The hipster, this is the person who creates the wireframe, you know, understands and talks with the user, tests out that user experience and hopefully you've got that um, working interface. And then the hacker, they do the front end build, connect the APIs, create, you know, understand what which platform, which block pain blockchain platform to use um, how are the what are the mechanics and how is this gonna work so hopefully by the end of this you've got a working demonstration or demo that you're going to present to the judges and you can celebrate and also this is your opportunity to see what everyone else is doing and also use your tokens to vote so the last phase is to go, which is growth and optimize. So if you really want to continue your project, um, grow, so understand who your customers are and what is the value you're providing them. Develop creative content so you can demonstrate that value and push it out to different channels. So what are those strategies and tactics and where are you gonna place um, your content? And then also with everything that you do, have a strong call to action. So what is the next step and how are you gonna close the sale? And then when it comes to optimization, there's horizon one, two, and three, normally in an innovation framework standpoint. So horizon one is developing ongoing and new features and products. Horizon two is 
looking into new markets and new targets. So how are you going to expand what you do to different personas? And then horizon three, how are you going to disrupt your business and look into new capabilities and businesses? So for example, um, Disney, they have a lot of Disney characters. They've got Aladdin, they've got, um, you know, Lion King, there's Moana. So here that's their horizon one. Horizon 2 is more around, um, say, it's the Disneyland. So not only are these characters in a movie scenario, but it could be for parents and for um, babysitters. You know, you're reaching a different geographic to encompass and to enable and have that, you know, kid-friendly vibe. And then Horizon 3 is at Disney+. Plus. So instead of you paying, I don't know, 20 bucks to go to the cinema, you're bringing um, Disney into your own couches. So you can subscribe on a monthly basis to watch all our favorite Disney movies on, you know, in the comfort of your couch. So those are the three different horizons of innovation and how you can optimize and carry through your hackathon project. So I'm just going to conclude with, again, true innovation. It's not just about the tech, but we're here to create movements and to also create change. So challenging all of you to also do the same thing. Um, and again, if you want to download this template, feel free to go on to bit.ly forward slash the hacker mindset. Um, here you can just download this template. It will also include an example of how you can complete it as well as a glossary. Um, so if you haven't already, please join our international hackathon community. Uh, we have a Facebook group called Hackathons International where everyone discusses about different hacks or ways to do better at hackathons as well as understanding different cultures when it comes to organizing hackathons. Follow us on Twitter or um, go on our website for featured hackathons. So let's get hacking. Uh, feel free to Join, to connect with me on LinkedIn or on Twitter or whatever else it is, or this is my email if you have any further questions. Thank you, Angela. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you guys for joining this meeting. You see, we said had something unexpected interruption and we were able to recover very soon. So kudos to the team and to all of you for participating in this and being uh, staying with us. So we have uh, a small uh, surprise for you, uh, uh, aside from the surprise that we had just earlier, <laughs> which was not planned, <laughs> we have another surprise. Uh, so this is a chicken dance. So guys, right now I would like you to start your videos. If you would like to dance with us, uh, we would like you to get on camera, get the loose, and we're going to uh, do a just a little dance. Uh, but before we're going to rehearse, all right? So, chicken dance. If you've never done it before, the moves are, first you do it with your hands. One, two, three, four. Great, yeah, so if you cannot unmute, uh, oh, sorry, if you cannot uh, start your video, ask me how and my team will help you. All right, so then you do the elbows. One, two, three, four. Excellent. Then you do the kind of the running uh, hands. Run, 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 run. That's good. All right. And after that, you do clap. Clap, 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 clap. Okay. <laughs> We're doing really well. So one more time. All four moves together. One, two, three, four elbows. One, two, Running hands, one, two, three, four, clapping, one, two, three, four. Okay, so now we're going to turn on the music. It's going to be a little bit faster than we just practiced. So be, bear with me and try to do it with me. Start, hands, elbows, hands, clap, hands, elbows, Running hands, hands, clap, hands, elbows, running, freestyle. Don't be shy. Thank you. 
Everybody who is dancing will go and get thousand dollars. Thank you. And freestyle. There is still chance to start your video and dance with us for the prize. For the surprise prize. And one more time. Everybody. All right, so that concludes our ceremony. We will have the recording and somewhat edited <laughs> up on the website cryptochicks.ca slash SOS Hack Life. We're going to repeat actually the same ceremony a little bit later in seven hours for our Asia and Australia because it's we hours right now. Thank you, Angela, for joining us and thank you very much, Angela. You have only seven hours to sleep. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. We will see you soon and please uh, look at our calendar and join our events uh, tomorrow and day after tomorrow as well. Thank you. Bye everybody. Thank you everyone. Bye. Thank